So, in our Russia close-up series today, we're coming to you from the Yakutia region. It's in the country's far east and is home to one of the coldest cities on earth. And uh, coping with the weather is a harsh reality of people's everyday lives. Our reporter Alice Hibberts in Yakutsk, which is six hours ahead of Moscow. That gives you an idea of just how big this country is. Alice, good to see you there. Tell us, what's the weather like in Yakutsk? What, what are the temperatures like? Well, Bell, as you can see, it is uh, rather chilly here this morning, as usual in the Republic of Sakha, Yakutia. As you've mentioned, we are some six hours and six time zones away from you in Moscow in northeastern Siberia. And the climate is just one of the remarkable things about this republic. Uh, with some 40% of the republic situated above the Arctic Circle, it does boast the coldest inhabited area on Earth. But also, the size uh, really does make this republic unique. It's the largest republic in Russia, taking up a fifth of the country. That's roughly a little smaller than India, or alternatively, 13 Frances put together. The republic itself crosses some three time zones. Another unique fact about this republic is that it is ridiculously rich in natural resources. Legend has it when the, the uh, god of creation was flying around the world distributing riches and resources, his fingers got so cold as he crossed over Yakuta that he dropped them all. So you name it, they've got it here. Gold, timber, uh, oil, uh, silver, diamonds. The diamond uh, monopoly Arosa, which is based here, produces some 25% of the world's rough cut diamonds. The Republic also has its own distinct culture and traditions and language and diet. Well, with more on the many things that make this Republic unique, here's Artie's Leah Ferguson. The Yakut people, so we're told, worship the sun, presumably for its ability to thaw a frozen face. This is Russia's Asia, where delicate Asiatic features form a contrast to the harsh Arctic climate. Yakuts make up 40% of the population here. They speak a language of Turkic origin. At the local school, we're told Yakut is rich in verbs, and many of the words sound as if they're stuck together with glue as these students demonstrate. These children learn to speak Yakut from age 11. Lessons are compulsory for natives, but nowadays many Russians are learning the language too. For horse breeder Nikolai, Yakut is the only way to communicate with the four-legged natives. The Yakut horse has a fatty flesh, the reason it can endure temperatures of minus 60 degrees Celsius. Yakut horses are the only ones that can survive in an Arctic climate. But they never lay down during the winter. They sleep standing up. Still, they are strong, tough and hardy animals. And the people are hardy too in this sort of weather but they say the best way to survive is to wear fur. Come to Yakutia and you'll realize that nothing but fur keeps you warm. The Yakutsk boot factory saves many a toe from frostbite. All handmade from reindeer hide, wool and felt. This is traditional local footwear, but still popular today. No two pairs look the same, all with individual beading and sequins. Well, all of these pieces of fur come from reindeer legs, and it takes 14 of these reindeer legs to make one pair of boots. But these boots are in such high demand that this factory produces 700 pairs per month. If fur's not your thing, then this is an alternative way to keep warm. national Yakut sport of energetic leaps and bounds. It may look unusual, but it does have a purpose. The sport increases your endurance and fitness. Traditionally, Yakuts were hunters and they needed to jump from rock to rock in the swamps. So that's how this type of jumping originated. Nowadays, the Yakut people say jumping helps them to outwit the weather. Here, it's about survival of the fittest. Leah Ferguson, RT, in the Republic of Yakutia.
people having uh, spent some time here. I can certainly understand the national assumption with their jumping up and down to keep warm. Well, someone who knows all about life in the region is Tatiana Monasterova, a teacher at school number 17 here in the Republic. Uh, Tatiana, could you please explain why the Yakutian language is compulsory in your school and why some of the classes are actually taught in Yakutian? Uh, as you probably know, um, our republic is bilingual, and uh, there are two main official languages, Yakut and Russian. And uh, um, uh, some uh, parents who moved from regions of our republic, they asked uh, the head uh, of our uh, school uh, to open um, Yakut specialized classes that uh, children should um, uh, can um, uh, learn, the, for example, mathematics, physics in their native language because it is very um, important that um, children were taught in their native language. They uh, understand better uh, all materials in their native language. But it's not just the language that your school uh, teaches. It's also Yakutian culture and tradition. Would you mind telling me a little bit about that? Yes, of course. It is very uh, important to remember all our traditions and customs. And uh, some uh, teachers of uh, primary school, they learn children to uh, sing um, toyuk, uh, to sing uh, hohai and dance it. Uh, and uh, they are uh, also... Our children are taught to play Hamus, our national uh, instrument. Well, we saw a little insight into what all that means in Leah's package. It looks a fabulously rich culture. Tatiana, thank you so much for coming down and talking to us. I'm afraid that all is all we have time for from the Saka Yakuti in the Republic this morning. Do join us in a couple of hours' time for more. Right now, back to you in Moscow. Anna Sibbert, thanks very much indeed. As uh, Anna says, she'll be back with us in a couple of hours from now. Keep warm, Anna. Good to see you there. Thanks very much.